Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the Break the Cycle nonprofit website. I want to introduce you to a very complex, controversial subject that I've been studying for almost 30 years as a professional therapist and as the son of two functional alcoholics. I want to offer you a summary of my observation about the widespread stressor of addiction. Let me suggest, addiction is not a character flaw, it's not a disease, it's not a disease. It's not caused by a weak will. Addiction serves a purpose, it is to self-medicate reliably against inner pain. What is inner pain? Inner pain is unbearable combination of shame, guilt, fear or anxiety, emptiness, sadness, confusion. Those can feel overwhelming when a person is not taught at an early age how to recognize and deal with them. Most of us have inner pain from time to time. The challenge of being human is, how do we manage our inner pain? Because many people grow up in dysfunctional, low nurturance families. They're not taught how to either recognize or manage their pain. What they discover, in part because of social imprinting and examples all around us, is that addiction is a reliable medication that makes the pain go away for a while. The paradox is addiction increases inner pain, specifically shame, guilt, and hopelessness. So addiction is an automatic unconscious reflex by people who are feeling too much inner pain. Where does this pain come from? Usually, in my experience as a veteran therapist, it comes from the early years of being raised in a low nurturance or dysfunctional family. Adults who themselves are psychologically wounded and inherited ignorance from their ancestors do their best to raise their children, but frequently they don't meet their kids' needs. And when that happens, kids accumulate inner pain. What can you do about addictions? Can you cure them? The prevailing answer is no. Can you reduce them? In my experience as a veteran therapist, the answer is yes. What's required to reduce or manage versus cure an addiction? There are several things that need to happen. First, a so-called addict, which is a code word for someone who is psychologically wounded and in great pain. The addict has to hit bottom. She or he has to wake up one morning or reach a point in the afternoon or evening that says, I cannot tolerate living like this one more moment. I am going to change. Bottoms are of two types. There are real bottoms where people do change permanently. And there are trial or pseudo bottoms where they try for a while and then they fall back into their own self-medication habits. So the first thing that usually has to happen, there are exceptions, is a, a person in, with, who is self-medicating needs to hit bottom. Secondly, for a successful end, or management at least, of addictions. And there are four kinds of addictions, by the way. They all work the same way. The white, most widely known is addictions to substances, including food, by the way. Food is a drug that alters your mood and your physiology and your hormones. People can become addicted to the process of eating and to food itself, specifically sugar, 
and carbohydrates because those are those change our bodies and our brains and give us temporary pleasure they make the pain go down so you can be addicted to substances you can be addicted to activities like betting gambling for instance you can be addicted to moods like rage which feels powerful and if you're shame based the last thing you've ever experienced is feeling powerful so you can become addicted to moods substances activities including shopping for instance or cleaning or working out those can become unhealthy compulsions which are no longer you can't control them by willpower that's what a compulsion is it's action that you cannot control with mental boundaries the last kind of addiction is relation is uh, addiction to a relationship the popular name for that is codependence it works just like the other three kinds of addictions you become so focused compuls compulsively on another person on their welfare on their behavior on their appearance on how they relate to you that you lose sight of yourself alias you forget about or minimize or numb out your inner pain so there are four kinds of addictions to begin to manage them you have to hit bottom the next thing in my experience is you need to free your true self to manage your personality that probably will mean nothing to you unless you study lesson one in the break the cycle website there are eight lessons there in sequence of self-study lessons the first lesson is how to recognize if you're ruled by a false self which most people are and how to free your wise true self in order to manage an addiction you must do that there are exceptions but it makes the likelihood of quote recovery from addiction much higher so learn about your false and true selves about psychological wounds of which there are six the wounds cause your inner pain learn about them in lesson one and work to free your true self um, then you need to learn about the mechanics of addiction which is what this brief video is attempting to summarize for you then you need to identify the third step is identify specifically what is your inner pain that's easy to say it's hard to do inner pain is can be a mix of as i said excessive shame i'm a terrible person i'm unlovable i'm ugly i'm stupid i'm a failure inner shame that starts in our first six years of life excessive guilt I do bad things it feels the same as shame but it's different excessive fear is a widespread perhaps universal cause of inner pain I fear the unknown I fear failure I fear intimacy I fear success I fear fear I fear relationships I fear taking risks so that's a source of inner pain another source of inner pain which is a little more difficult to recognize is reality distortion another way we manage inner pain is to distort reality to reduce the, our discomfort the primary example is denial what inner pain i don't have any inner pain oh yes you do the signs are unmistakable so identify specifically your inner pain identify what promotes your inner pain frequently that has to do with your childhood if you do what's called in lesson one parts work you can identify the personality sub cells that bring you each one of these sources of pain and over time with respect and patience and help and creativity you can reduce each one of these sources of pain when you do that your need to self-medicate goes down the last thing you need to do in addition 
you're hitting bottom, freeing yourself and reducing your inner pain proactively and intentionally. The last thing you need to do is identify if you're living in a low nurturance or pain promoting environment, you need to change your environment and get into one which promotes healthy living and healthy pain management. Frequently that means you have to reorganize your relations with your dysfunctional family members and or spouse. This is a very complicated process. Uh, I'm not going to cover, I'm not going to begin to cover how to do that in this brief video. What I hope you'll come away from, uh, come away with in watching me right now is addiction is not a disease, it is not a character flaw, it is an unconscious attempt to medicate inner pain. It is not subject to willpower because the inner pain dominates. Addiction can be, can be reduced once you're aware of what causes inner pain, how to reduce it, how to manage it, and how to seek a more healthy, functional environment after you hit bottom. There are many, many other things to know about uh, individual addictions, including physiological effects, um, about family interventions, because addiction, in the bottom line, addiction is a family problem, not an individual problem. Yes, of course, individuals suffer from addictions, but really, addiction is an indication of major family dysfunction. That's why clinically it's useful to have family therapy with one or more clinicians who are familiar with the dynamics and causes uh, and effects of, quote, addiction, unquote. So I hope in case you are addicted or you may be addicted or you care deeply for someone who is addicted, an adult or a child, you will look first to see what kind of a family they came from or they are in now. Secondly, you will study lesson one to learn about true selves and false selves and psychological wounds that we inherit from our ancestors. Then I hope you will study the several different articles in lesson one and lesson five, which has to do with families, about how to specifically take effective steps to reduce addictions. It can be done. I hope you find this concept uh, mentally stimulating and challenging. I hope you study more about it. I hope you study lesson one through six or seven in this website to make your life significantly better and give your children the best chance they can have towards not inheriting the toxic psychological wounds plus an awareness cycle that's degrading our society. Thanks for watching.